Ba -ba Boom! Hey everybody, so Gregor here. I uh, finally figured out how to upload big files from my phone to YouTube, so I'm gonna be making some videos. I feel like I got a lot to teach. I've been saying lately that it's a weird little angle. I have my phone hooked up to my tripod, it's sort of cool. Um, that I'm trying to be a builder lately, and I'm doing somewhat good at it. I think I'm doing pretty good, but uh, really I'm a teacher, and so I'm going to be a teacher right now. And uh, keeps things keep coming to me in terms of realizations where it's my friend slash roommate's birthday tonight, Rossi, happened to be on the 26th, this infamous day that we were all putting some intention to, not all of us, some of us, putting some focus into. I wasn't putting focus, I was aware. And I feel like it's more tied in with the new moon. Um, that's about eight hours away from us right now. And uh, there's the Obama date tomorrow. So again, there's this time cycle playing out with uh, realizations internally and externally. And so my contribution to these realizations is, is some real physics. I consider it to be real physics. There's a lot of bunk physics out there. And so we're going we're gonna to start with some groundwork. And uh, I can't go out with Rossi for his birthday. Even though it, nope, it's still raining. I, I have my road bike. I haven't had a license for like six years. It's a good reason why. Um, several good reasons why. The universe doesn't want me to have one. The universe doesn't want me going out and socializing all the time. It wants me to be doing things like this. There's, there's reasons I've been making these sacrifices. And uh, I need to teach. So I'm going to teach right now. And uh, it makes me happy to teach. And it makes me also happy to learn from you. And we get the whole vice versa student teach relationship going on back and forth. And so we'll talk with some really brief dimensional theory. All right? Utilizing vortex mathematics. And so we got to vortex mathematics. And so I'll break this down really quickly those who are need a, a relapse. Vortex mathematics, we're looking at cyclical aspects of mathematics. Um, so the, the circle in sacred geometry is feminine, while the line is masculine. And so we're not throwing out the line in traditional mathematics, because when you combine the line with the circle, you get a magnificent spiral, which is the child, or the manifestation, the illusion of the two. And so linear mathematics is masculine, and it's based on quantitative information. Cyclical mathematics is qualitative, and is based on, uh, or is feminine, and is based on qualitative mathematics. Ideally, you want to use both. And so in vortex mathematics, one aspect is you're seeing a perspective from the center. And that perspective, in the simplest sense, has nine different perspectives. You really get more perspectives than just the nine. The nine is just this base foundation which patterns a little fractalize out on the basis of three, the Holy Trinity. Um, and so uh, if you take any number in traditional linear mathematics, you can break it down into a single digit. Um, and so an example, uh, or we were counting on a circle, seven, eight, not 10, 11, 12, 13, and so on. Um, so the number 29, for example, is what I like to use. 2 plus 9 is 11. 1 plus 1 is 2. So 29 is a quantum number, or the number representing vortex mathematics or cyclical mathematics. I like the number quantum. Uh, the quantum number is 2. Um, so it's 29 has a the quantity of aspect is 29. The quality of aspect is 2. And so a common pattern in the mathematics is a doubling sequence. 1, 2, 4, 8, 7, 5. Um, and so we get 8, 16, and 1, 6 is 7, 32, 3 and 2 is 5, 64, 6 and 4 is 10, is 1, 128, 2, 256, 4, and so on. Also works in reverse. So we got 1, 0 0.5, 0 0.25, 0 0.125, 0 0.0625, and so on. One thing people usually don't share with you, I have a little packet here. All this stuff is on vortexspace.org. And so... The doubling sequence actually, actually represents powers 2 and 5. And so, um, in, math, in this 
sequences where you see there's a doubling sequence going one way, having sequences going the other way. Ideally, one represents the powers of two, and the powers of two doubles n halves. It has two vectors, and the other one's the power of five. So we'll start at five. Um, five, 25, 125, uh, 625, uh, 31, 25, and so on. And backwards, would be five, one, point two, point zero four, point zero zero eight, and so on. So it shows that the doubling sequence has an interrelationship between the powers of two and five. And then there's the Trini oscillation, three nine six six nine three. Um, and so three three nine or six six nine um, is one way to see it. I have a little picture in here. Oh, so yeah, technology's just been going crazy for me. Otherwise, um, I'd have my computer. The hard drive blue, compressor in the shop blue, um, this phone's even been giving me problems. Uh, so many technolo technology problems. Makes me want think the universe is wanting me to let go of all these technological attachments and just focus on, the si focus on the simple things, even though this pen is a tool, language is a tool, and they're all just extensions of ourselves. So, how simple can we get? Who knows? Maybe we do, and we just aren't aware. There's a cool picture in here, which I can't... I'm guessing it's not in here. Um, I'm going to draw it. Power of drawing. Okay. So 3, 9, 6, and 6, 9, 3 can be imagined as a basis to matter and antimatter. And so we have spiraling out and unspiraling through the balance and a re-spiraling. And so we can call this a 3, this is a 9, and this is a 6. This is a 3 white hole coming into creation. Creation is untwisting to where it's fully untwisted, where there's a balance, a 9, and then it goes into a retwisting into a 6 black hole. That 6 black hole then connects to a 6 white hole, so we have another spiral set over here. Um, it's untwisting from the 6 white hole, going through the 9 to where there's balance, there's no twisting, to a retwisting of the 3. Okay, Simplest possible way to look at matter and antimatter. All right. So, uh, well, let's get on to um, simple dimensional theory, first dimension. And so, in this, there's um, four distinct, well, technically there's five distinct um, counting sequences, and there's linear counting sequences. So I just showed you a doubling sequence, all right? The doubling sequence is a linear exponential sequence. And then there's a, um, a linear sequence. And so I'm going to draw this really quickly, actually. Use this page. And so there's linear sequences, which are like this. Um, they're, they're just, there's a constant rise. The doubling sequence um, is it's exponential. Um, it's really hard to see the difference. But this one you can say is counting by ones, counting by twos, counting by threes. This is doubling. Um, so this is 2x. Well, this is x plus y. y being 1, 2, 3, or 4. Um, and the third one, which I'll go into also, is uh, Fibonacci. Fibonacci is an exponential curve, which is more like... Um, I don't know the equations. Screw the equations. Keep it simple. Um, I, like, I like lines and pictures. I think we all do. So, um, counting by one, you create a, a, a nonagon, a nine-point um, uh, polygon. One, two, three, four, five. Which, if you look in here, is the shape right here. Again, all these images are on vortexspace.org under Gregor Arturo. And so, it also works in reverse. Um, where if we're counting by 9, 9, uh, uh, 18, wait, 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 no, sorry, the opposite of 1 is 8, so uh, 8, 16, um, 24, uh, 32, and so on. So the nonagon represents counting by 8 and 1. You notice the 8 and the 1 add up to the 9. Next one we'll do is 2 and 7, and 2 and 7 is... Uh, 
2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, um, the opposite would be 7, 7, 14, 21, 28, 2 and 8 is 10, which is 1. Um, I recommend you guys just doing these all yourselves. Um, I'm counting by 4 and 5. 4, 8, 12, 16, um, 5, 10, 15, 20. So you have these three different stars. Um, a unique one is the Trinity. Um, counting by 9 doesn't create a star because a 9 is always a 9. 9, 18, 27, 36. So technically the fifth star is just a dot. <laughs> um, or you can say it's a line through the core because there's a hin 4.5 between the 4 and the 5, so you have a god axis in the center. Um, and uh, the unique one is the trinity, which is counting by threes and sixes. Um, and so 3, 6, 9, 12, uh, 15, 6, 12, 18, 24, uh, 30, and so on. And so it creates your three triangles. Um, and so it's your three family groups. 2, 5, 8, um, and 1, 4, 7. It's your three trinity of energies. Which being, three fundamental energies of reality. This torque, 9, really you can flip flop them, but we'll just say there's torque, which is a balance, it's a circle. Um, there's an outward spiral, centrifugal force, uh, yang energy, masculine, expansion, explosive, uh, cooling. Um, uh, then there's the uh, implosion, um, uh, uh, feminine energy, yin, um, centripetal force. And so centripetal force pulls compression in, sends expansion out. Centrifugal force sends compression out, pulls expansion in. Um, well, a torque is a balancing of those forces, and it's just a circle. It's pure rotation. All physics can be explained in those three forces. And so, uh, let's talk about these linear sequences so we can move up to the next dimension. And so, we'll start with the simplest one of them all. The uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. 7, 8, 9. Okay, here's your linear sequence as a line. Um, it can also be a circle, like we were looking before. So actually, let's go back to this. The circle is good. We got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Alright? It's a linear sequence, and how does this linear sequence flow? How does the energy flow in it? Okay? Well, it moves like a longitudinal wave. This is a scalar wave. The, the linear sequences represent scalar waves. Um, if you uh, Tesla started to start to work on test on scalar waves, and so a scalar wave, the simplest way to understand is also how sound moves. It's a pressure wave, and so if we had a slinky, I wish I, I really need a slinky because I use this example all the time. I just need to carry one with me. If you had a slinky, and I took and someone else was holding one end, and I was holding one end, I took the end and I compressed it on one side, and I let it go. It bounced back and forth, back and forth. That's a longitudinal wave. It's a pressure wave, and so. Now let's understand this metaphysically, because it's one and the same, as above, so below. I'm putting my intent, my awareness, right here. I'm putting a compression of focus, compression of awareness on the one, while there's an expansion around the others. And so it's simply going to flow. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. One, two, three, four, five. By my awareness alone, that's how the energy is flowing in this sequence. Okay? Just like if I'm moving the different stars, we're by two, two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve. My, the awareness is, is it's moving in that direction. It's the simplest way energy moves. It's compression of your awareness of sentience, an expansion of sentience, which you could say is the forgetting um, of the others um, at the same time. Okay? Now, let's create some magic. Let's discover some electromagnetism. And so, so you have one linear sequence going this way, okay? And then we have another linear sequence going this way, all right? 
some of them, they got collide into each other, okay? So, you have, in the math, we get into higher levels of, of, um, of the mathematics and matrices. And so, one, for example, is the hexagram. And so, I'll explain this more. We got one, two, four, eight, seven, five. Okay, so this is the doubling sequence I was talking about. And then we have a trinity sequence. Three, three, nine, six, six, nine. And then two, one. So this is what you'd say the having sequence. But technically, say this one represents the powers of two. This represents the trinity. This represents the powers of five. Um, so one you can say is, uh, you can say the powers of two is centrifugal force. This is torque. This is um, uh, centripetal force. So two, one, five, seven, eight, four. Um, so you all see how I'm doing this easily. Five, six, oh, seven, six, five, four. Two, eight, seven, five, one, and then we got the uh, five, six, seven, eight. This is gonna be a nine. It's gonna be a three. It's gonna be six, six, nine, three. Okay, we got the hexagram. And so, so let's talk about these are two linear sequences colliding. Now, there's the doubling sequence, trinity sequence, doubling sequence. Uh, having sequence or doubling trinity having or I should correct let's we'll say powers of two trinity powers of five pa uh, powers of two um, trinity oh there's one more uh, nine eight one six seven five seven eight four two okay and so this is a six by six that represents the hexagram the star of David Okay, which is really a donut, like that. And it represents two pathways. And so this pathway connects to this pathway, connects to this pathway, and this pathway connects to this pathway, connects to this pathway. It's so a six by six, so there's 36 numbers in it. Um, and because there's two pathways, each pathway contains 18 numbers. If you look at the numbers, it's an overlaying of the linear sequences. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, the other direction, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, uh, 7, 8, 9. So what's happening right here is when you collide these linear sequences, all right, we get this. So these numbers, these two linear sequences are colliding. And so you have overlapping scalar waves. When you overlap two scalar waves, guess what it gives birth to? The torus. Electromagnetism. We're all familiar with electromagnetic waves. All right, so the torus. And the torus. Is electro is where we call the electromagnetic spectrum. Electromagnetic spectrum is second dimensional energy. Scalar energy is first dimensional energy. And so, um, when you overlap two magnetic fields, they cancel out but convert back to first dimensional scalar energy. Um, to physics, we just say the magnetic fields can't cancel out. However, they contradict themselves. All energy cannot be created nor destroyed. It has to go somewhere. If two cars collide into each other. The energy goes somewhere. It just doesn't boom. Oh, they just negate themselves. No, it goes into the steel frame and distributes itself throughout the whole body. Uh -huh. And so there is a conversion process, a transmutation between electromagnetic energy and scalar energy. And so uh, we're going to talk about the aspects of electromagnetism now. And so in a donut, we have, um, so to understand how that matrix 
translates to a donut is here, I'm going to go back for a second so you guys can see this connection. I also have videos of the models on the rest of my YouTube account um, if you want to see it. If this, these, as you will say, there we go, how the circuits connect to themselves. Um, the way it's going A, B, C, and this is X, Y, Z. Um, Oh, also being pointed out, I point out, there's also diagonal patterns, um, one, three, five, seven, nine, counting by two, counting by one, five, six, five, or three, four, five, six, seven. Um, there's three different versions of these. If you take three different hexagrams and overlap them, you can create this beautiful thing, a triad. We're going to explain electromagnetism and how you create a magnetic field with triad. All right, and so. If you take that matrix and you stick them on this piece of paper, okay, and uh, there's six pathways. So imagine three black and three white on this. I can then cut, turn it and um, connect it to itself this way. I can take that piece of paper and connect it and t connect it um, this way. So you can create a linear form of geometry, all right, um, or you can connect it yourself to make a tubular form of geometry. And so, when that does that, all, all the star geometries, a pentacle, octagram, hexagram, relate to the pathways in which energy flows around the torus. So, um, Star of David, um, are pathways that move around this torus um, and create specific forms of interacting geometries of compression and expansion. And so, uh, where do we begin? Well, let's look at the side of the torus, okay? So on the side of the torus, there's energy getting compressed in, there's energy expanding out. There's also energy spinning around the torus this way. Okay? You have two different axes. This axis represents the electrical axis of information, while this axis, the rotational axis, represents the magnetic um, axis of information. And so you have a compression of energy you have an expansion of energy. You have a negative charge. You have a positive charge. Okay. Um, you have a north magnetic polarity. You have a south magnetic polarity. So, uh, to create a magnetic field, though, people say the torus is aligned, say, with the Earth, but the Earth. Um, doesn't doesn't have a an electric dipole um, along its axis. It has a magnetic dipole along its axis. So that's where this concept comes in, the triad. This guy's cast out of business in tin. He's not perfectly laid out the way it's supposed to be. Um, and the notion is, if this direction of this tube is north that way, and this direction of this tube is north is that way, and this direction of the tube north is that way, then it creates a single magnetic axis in the center that allows a north and a south. At the same time, this is like a etheric gear. Um, I did an experiment one time, which I always want to make a video. It's a really simple concept. Is I took a bunch of neodymium balls, and you can try this yourself, ne neodymium spheres, and put them into a circle. Connect, make a closed magnetic loop. Um, just like this is. It's creating a closed magnetic loop. Um, and uh, when you do that, it creates a magnetic axis in the core. All right. And so uh, when you put all of these together, um, it creates some, it. They're, they each are supporting each other in conjunction. They all feed each other. Um, they all dance with each other. And so the really cool thing that we're going to get into is the qualitative information 
of electric polarization um, and how these tubes are made. So a pent uh, hexagram has two tubes spiraling around each other. It's a double helix that has a total of six twists um, connecting into itself. So, so what I've been building in my mach machine shop is a piece of copper twisted into a double helix. Now, if I wanted to make this into a hexagram, I'd have to take six of these loops and heat it up and bend it into itself, which I'm doing right now. Because the hexagram wants to be made of steel or iron. Um, and so, and there's also a specific geometry. It's also interesting to know that with a hexagram is if this is one unit and this is one unit and the core is two units. So it's one, two, three, four. Um, it relates also to the doubling sequence, that ratio. Um, well, octogram, these are my two favorite stars. Um, I have a lot of my profile and stuff about the octogram. Okay, the ratio from here to here, from here to here, is the golden ratio. So this is a two to one, oh, two to one ratio, and this is a um, sorry, it's a square of the golden ratio. So this is square the golden ratio to one, which is also two point six one eight. Um, and so the pentacle 